Hi guys, it's me, Carrie Silverlining Mena, here for another episode of Silver Linings. This one I got to truly make all about me. My soul sissy, uh, her minor rhyme, is an amazing trance channeler, I like to call her Heather. And she offered to trance channel a future version of me. And I don't mean like a future alien version or a future incarnation, I mean future Carrie. So we went back, or we went forward 10 years. And I got some scoop about my life. So basically, this first bit of this video is like a reading for me. And first, I, I thought I might cut this part out because it seemed a little narcissistic that I would think that all of you would want to know what's up with my future. And probably some of it doesn't mean much to you, and that's all right. Sorry about that. But I do have some information on Avery and how our relationship has evolved. And I know some of you will be interested in that and about the future of Stardust, and what kind of, um, like, in which way our professional paths will, will continue, I guess, for a little bit of a hint for me and, and Heather. And I know you guys will, will be interested in that, too. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that part in, especially since I have been told to not censor my life. I'm supposed to keep everything in. I'm not supposed to edit it out. So even though I'm a little nervous and you you will see, I disclose some pretty juicy information. I just do it. I blab everything anyway. Why not just share the whole damn thing? But if that bores you, then I encourage you to skip ahead because in uh, the second half of it, she goes into my past. And I don't mean past as Carrie. I mean a past life. I and mean, then we're going to that brothel life I'm always talking about. And I have a lot of people that I know in this life that were in that life. And I did drop a few names, and um, I, have, I have to laugh at this, because one of the names, I just misunderstood her at first. And by her, I mean me. And she's so funny. And I love having these little intros, because then I can go back and fix all the shoulda, woulda, couldas that I missed or wish I had said and done. So this one, I have a friend named Amanda. Some of you know my friend Amanda Cameron. And she, um, I thought that she was, that, past me, hooker me, was talking about Amanda Cameron. And she said, no, I didn't get permission to talk about Amanda. Her higher self didn't give me permission and claim that it was in her best interest that she know. But I'm going to tell you anyway. She said something like, oh, she goes, but I can't tell you. I had to write it down. She goes, I can't tell you. And she, went, she was one of the ones that worked with you. She ended up, and I'm not going to tell you the rest. I'm going to have you watch. She just totally ratted Amanda's life out, even though she wasn't supposed to. That girl is so sassy. She is a rule breaker, a girl after my own heart. And I learned that that's where I got my appreciation of silver linings from, because she really had a shitty life. But she was still so shiny and had such a beautiful, funny disposition. Trippy. Okay, so, and I did make one more mistake, so it's confusing when you watch it. I don't even know if you'll care, but I care. It feels like a typo, so I'm going to lay it on you real quick. A long time ago, I was told that Michael, who is you know, part of my soul group, my M6, he and I are doing a twin vibration relationship. I don't know if it's the exact same kind that you read about on the internet, but it's pretty intense. I'll share about it one day, so I always have an interest in him. But I was led to believe that in that particular life, he was my sister. So when I ask about my sisters, I'm still thinking that, oh, look, that she means um, Michael, but it wasn't Michael. I had two sisters, and I talk about them, and Michael was sister-like in that when I came to the brothel, it's him that kind of, or it was a her time, She was, he was a she, um, took me under her wing and um, made my dresses for me and kind of took care of me. So that's why that whole thing got muddled there. So he's sister-like. Not one of my two sisters, but it's crazy. Um, by the way, I learned that this one here was my daughter. He used to be a human. I love this little puppy so much. Okay, so let me bust out my super cool clapper from Sarah. Goodbye, Silva. Have a sweet baby. So sweet. I love this thing. Let me see if I get all the words right. Here we go. Silver Linings, Hermione Rhyme, Episode 2. Future and past. What else? That's it. That's all I'm going to go with. And action. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoy it.
All right, I have pressed record. I think you're going to do a backup record, although you don't know uh, where the file will go. Okay, yeah. I'm, I, it says it's recording. I don't know where it's going, but. Okay. It's we, have, we have huge winds here, like gusts. There was a big fire yesterday around town because the winds are so huge. So I'm oh, crossing yeah. fingers for some reception. It looked like you were flipping off the camera when you did that. So I'm uh, crossing fingers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we are on my second episode of my brand new very own show, Silver Linings, and I got my soul sissy here, Hermina. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for you to do this for me. This is basically going to be all about me, pretty much a reading. And you know why? Because this is my show and I get to do whatever I want. I always exactly. like to try to sneak shit in, but this is this is truly about me. But I think I have a very interesting life, so I hope people <laughs> will be a little bit interested in it. And not only that, I'm just fortunate enough to be able to have these opportunities to peek into other places of my life. But I'm pretty sure that plenty of others have these same kinds of, you know, configurations, stories from elsewhere and elsewhen. So, um, so don't, you know, don't think that, wow, this is just so trippy, because I think everybody is trippy like that. Who are you looking at? Who's here? Sorry. Um. I don't know who it is, but it is someone saying, introduce yourself, introduce yourself, because you're going to be growing your audience. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and so okay. it's not just going to be people watching who know us, because obviously people know who I am, but there's going to be other people who are just watching you for the first time, and they're like, who's this bitch? So. <laughs> well, my name is Carrie Silverlining Mena, and, um, and I'm just some girl. I'm some girl that was on this crazy path, and part of my path was to teach about my life, my journey, and um, and I'm going to go ahead and drop a name. I'm going to drop our soul said's name. We are uh, we share a higher self, an uh, over soul with Eric Meadows. He's the one that got us both on this trail. So I've invited him to come spy on us. I don't think he has a choice. I think he just must always be with us because we are connected on an energetic level. I guess yeah. we're like uh, you could call us like um like twins. We're we're twin flames with Eric, except there's six of us, which is called a sex tuplet, which the is sex tuplet. That, the sex <laughs> tuplet, right? So, right. Um, so let me tell you what's going to go on today because I love this one. I'm so excited for this. We're going to first. Heather's going to trance channel. She is an amazing trance channel. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I'm what? such an ass. I was going to like fully, fully promote you, and I still will because you got books. You're an author. Um. You've got mm -hmm. one that's getting ready to be published or grabbing a publisher somewhere. Oh, I'm going to ask that question. Oh, I, I need to fucking get a publisher. So if there's like agents or publishers watching this, like that's oh, not yeah. going to work. I don't know. <laughs> that's not going to work. You, yeah. Well. You no, know, I want to go, I want a literary agent. Okay. But then I want to publish with an indie publisher, which is different than a traditional publishing because the big guys are like, no. Okay, so I needed an agent first, then a publisher. I got the order wrong, did I? Eh, it's whatever. Whatever. And so tell me about your book, because I've read most of it. I still didn't find out who kissed who. Don't tell us. <laughs> um, here's a hint. Nothing happens. So I don't first, write. Oh, story of my life. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, it's about you. Um, okay, <laughs> oh, so... For people that don't know, I am a published author and I write for a living. That's my passion and channeling and doing all this stuff is kind of like a side hobby. Um, so this book I'm trying to get a agent on is called Iltheria and it's Greek. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I could be pronouncing it wrong. Um, it's Greek for liberty and freedom. And the whole book is a dystopian based off of our society today within the United States. And it's directly inspired by the presidential campaign from 2016. Hmm. And I had this real vivid dream and it was for an assignment for my creative writing class when I was in college. And I couldn't come up with the plot for a story. And I had to turn in tomorrow. And I had this dream of this vivid scene of this selfish entitled teenage girl who gets stuck in a massage parlor that a massage parlor it's really a prostitution scheme a brothel it was a brothel it yep. is about me. And, <laughs> right and she and she gets trapped there and that's all i had to base 
my story on. And I just kind of watching the whole presidential campaign kind of fed into that. And I'm like, you know what I can make. And then just ended up becoming a dystopian about this girl who not only changes her ways based off of things she's witnessed because she comes from a family that um, feeds off of those that are poor. Yeah. She's very privileged and she doesn't understand that there's other people who are less fortunate than her just because they grew up somewhere else. And there's a wall that, uh, a literal wall that separates her high end society from those who live in the poverty areas and the poverty areas keep trying to cross over because they think it's going to be a better life. But really both societies have their flaws. It's just the poverty pocket pocket is more open about those flaws. Meanwhile, the area where the lead character Margaret lives, they like to paint this facade that we're the greatest place to live at kind of like the United States. We're the greatest place ever, but really Mm -hmm. we have tremendous amount of flaws that we could really use some work on. Um, so the whole thing is just a giant metaphor for everything that's been going on. And I think it's geared towards young adults, so teenagers, but I think anyone could read this book. I think so, too. I mean, she is a teenager, but I am not. Well, sometimes I am. But I could still appreciate the storyline. I, I get that, you know, a young person can read it. Right. It's appropriate for a young person, but you don't have, and it's not like a, like a teenage romance kind of thing. It's like a you know, no. story. No, it's a, it's a story about a girl who tries, she gets taken behind the wall and is forced to be a prostitute in the poverty area. And she tries to find her way home. But along the way, she learns more about the poverty area and becomes very compassionate and changes yeah. who she is. Yeah. yeah. So cool. So be on the lookout for that bookshelf soon. Help us all manifest. <laughs> We're going to work on that. And it's a I done hope. deal. We're in this world. We already know that it's a done deal. And that's kind of cool. Unfortunately, you know, we know so much stuff about our futures. We don't always know how it's going to play out. But even though we know some things in our future, we don't know how it's going to get there. We still have to experience the journey. So you still have the anxiety mm-hmm. and you still have the impatience or whatever it is. You know, you can't bypass all that stuff just because you know the outcome will be in your favor. Right. Because it's, the odds will ever be in your favor. I hate Hunger Games, but I like that. <laughs> it's so funny. I wrote a dystopian, but I can't stand watching or reading dystopians. And it, uh, you, know, you, you know, you just set out to do it the right way. <laughs> you got to fix what's that's wrong. That's what I do, dystopian. right? That's what I think, though. And I'm such a narcissist when it comes to writing. I'm like, I can write. And really, recently, I was just told I was denied. I was rejected by a publisher because I wrote too well. She said, we don't publish literary art. And I'm like, okay, so my book was too good? Or what, what are you saying? <laughs> you found a nice so like, okay. behind that, didn't you? A great, a great I idea. know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I do like to find the light behind the dark, and that was it. Okay, so. Yeah. Oh, wait, so did I didn't even say what we're going to do yet. We're, okay. going to- we're going to, or you're going to, trans-channel a version of me, not, not as an alien and not in a different life. You're going to trans channel carry in um i don't i don't know how it works i mean it's going to be the exact date but like about a decade in the future and i'm going to try to get some scoop and um i don't know how much she's going to be willing to give up but we're going to try to get some answers and then we're going to go backwards and i talk all the time about my life um in this western i lived in a western i was in a brothel i was a hooker in a brothel and um, I guess I should go ahead and give a little background to that. And one of the reasons why it's so significant to me to want to know about this particular life. And when I started on this healing journey and I kind of met Eric, I, I, um, I was in Orlando and there was a group on <laughs> for a hypnosis session. It's the only way I could have afforded anything. It was 20 bucks. So I went and, and it was for anything, you know, weight loss or whatever. And I come in, I'm like, I want to do a past life regression. So I did it, and what I regressed back to, not even realizing it at this time, was that that life in that brothel. And I have very specific images of Eric and the room I was in. And um, and okay, I'm not I'm not going to go to all of that. I'm going to talk about it a different day. But um, but what interested me, and I mentioned this on Stardust last week, is when we talked to future alien me, she said that this version of Carrie was absorbed into her so she had memories of this life come into her awareness and about 20 years ago 
I started having what I, for a while, have been calling flashbacks of that brothel life. And I'm curious to see if I, if that version of me absorbed into this version of me. And that's why I was having those flashbacks. So I want to get to the bottom of all of this stuff. And also, not only that, I've met many people that have claimed to have been in that same life. So I want to investigate that a little bit too. And that's just kind of for fun. So that's that. You were there. We're going to find out about you and see if you were kind. I took off my glasses. I'm ready to start. <laughs> okay, I'm nervous about this. And okay, we're just going to wing it again. Do your thing. I'll see you later. Okay. Hold on. Future self, right? That's yep, let's start with the future. We want like a decade ish. Look at that. I'm finally skidding. Ah! Ah! It's the best thing you could have started this with. That was a question. Did I quit obsessing about this shit? Oh my gosh. Or wait, is it because you're in Heather's body? This one. Oh, oh no, what did you mean? Curse you, Carrie. <laughs> Look, what she's doing. <laughs> Hi, future <laughs> me. What the fuck? Okay, how this works? Yeah, is it's really your higher self who transforms herself into a future you. So it's technically still uh, your fairy girl, our fairy girl. Oh, because I was going to ask if you were really you, and if you had free will, <laughs> and you could unload some secrets, or a fairy girl was going to put her foot down. <laughs> It's really, that's what it is. Since she is you, she's us. Yeah. She can transform herself into any lifetime. So really, even if when you want to talk to that past self that we right. were, right. you're really just talking to the higher self who's transforming herself okay. into that life. Okay. Well, I kind of wanted these versions of me to be connected too, because you're not, because the me, me versions, the earth me versions won't have all the answers and I want all the damn answers gonna pony up I will try my best okay okay so let's go back to that skinny thing are you skinny because you're in Heather's body or did Carrie future Carrie finally get skinny no you'll always be very thick and not in a bad way but in a curvy sexy way okay. you'll you you'll have the moves well so I so I'm I'm okay with myself then because I'm feeling much better but I'm yes. not where I want to be okay what it is is you are going to lose about 10, 15 more pounds. Oh, I and then you will be comfortable in your body. It's not about you using the weight. It's about you accepting yourself. And you're not going to realize that till later. But okay. when it dawns on you, you're going to start crying. We'll start crying. <laughs> we will. You'll say how much you love yourself. And you'll start crying about it. I love myself. It was about this the whole time. You know what? Oh, I do really seem to pick up when I hit those milestones, don't I? Huh. Okay, so let me get some scoops from you. Okay. Okay, you know what? I have a little list here. Future me. Oh my gosh, look how fucking cute I am. I'm like the same person. Look at fluffing my hair. Abraham's watching. I just know it. Okay, so. Did I ever get the opportunity to reciprocate and give Heather these amazing experiences like she gives me? <laughs> no, not to the same degree. And that's just my opinion, though. I, not to the same degree. It's not the same. Am I, I think we were able to do what? Yes. Okay. The, okay. Here's the thing. Yes. <laughs> and she'll never tell you this is that you allow her to feel vulnerable. People don't, she can't do that around other people. 
and it breaks my heart that she's not able to open up fully to other people but you and I allow that to happen for her and that's the gift in and of itself well which she do you mean she H or she future me I'm so confused this is gonna be a tricky both. conversation okay both currently right. your gift to her is healing her how being you being her friend I love her so much. Are we still friends? Are we still besties and love each other so much? You stopped working together five years down the road, I would say, about okay. four or five years. Okay. And that day is going to be hard for both of you when you both decide it's over. And But it, it'll feel like you two broke up and it's going to be this kind of awkward thing. Yeah. But you'll get through it. And it'll be eventually both of you will finally decide, this is stupid. We should talk to each other. <laughs> oh, I want us to have a yucky one. I hope this conversation... No, it's not yucky. Okay. It's just you both feel uncomfortable a little bit because you feel like the other one feels uncomfortable. But you're both worried about each other feeling uncomfortable, feeling That's like we you're not friends. It's just lack of communication. So to avoid that, just... Say it's not awkward, but you both will need time to heal because it's the ending of something. Okay. So that time where you don't talk, it's it's not that long. It's a few months. Okay. And you both need to heal from something ending because she's going to go on to do way better things, and so will you. You'll be on your two separate paths. But we get to keep each other forever, right? Okay. And then. She'll have children, and she brings over her children all the time. You um, come visit each other. as It's not that you're friends anymore. It's more a sisterhood. You're sisters, literally sisters. I love her. And it's the best friendship ever. Okay. I'm done with this interview. That's all I need to know. Goodbye. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Let me ask about... Um, so, okay, I don't even need to ask about successes for us both. I think we're just don't have a choice. <laughs> Is she going to get um, her book published? Not this one. It'll be the other one she's working on that will get it first. The Sam um, one? Is it the Sam one or a different one? <gasps> that one. That one goes way off. And then uh, this one that she works on, it will. Uh, be more revel relevant because people need to read it as um, in retrospect, you know, catch 2020. Okay. And that's the book will become quite ironic in a good way. Wow. Okay, that's a nugget for her. Give me a nugget about what I'm going to do big. Okay. All right. So you and uh, I won't go into the marriage part. I don't so know am I still out. married? Am I married still? No, but it's a mutual agreement. And I know you don't feel like that now, but when it happens, it's like this pressure was just immediately taken off of you. And the children are all grown up and able to, you know, they don't, it's upsetting a little bit for them, I would say, just from observing. But for you, they're so grown up, you feel like they're, they're ready and it's okay. And you and and your husband have we your husband. I know that's weird. He's not mine anymore. We we finished what we came together to do, and that's and it's not. I mean, I've had my tears over it. I'm done crying about it. Uh, I know you wouldn't then, tell me if I couldn't handle hearing it. Thank you. You will be fine, and it'll be much more of a freedom. Like you re relinquish this chain from you that you've told yourself you're bound to, and that you're okay with. And you learn that deep down, you really weren't okay with it. I wasn't at that point. I was just done, completely over it. And we hardly spent any time together anyway. I was always gone. 
That's just about to start. Do you know where I am right now? Of course you do, you're very good. Yes. So my plan, my surrender was the was right then, right? Yes, I'm, it is. It's right for right now. Does that make sense? It's right for right now. Yeah, because it then doesn't feel like as, I do that forever. Right, because and then as things change, as you both change, and as the children change, it's all about the children. It's all about the kids. It's always been about the kids. It is. And we, and, stay, we stay friends, I hear. Yes, absolutely. It was a mutual agreement to end it. You both decide mutually. And the conversation was very calm. It was saying, we did what we came here to do. Let's, there's no point in us staying together. Kids are all grown up. They don't need us anymore. Right. And to be together, they would be fine without it. In fact, actually helps with college better for them anyway. With the lower income, they go off of your income. <laughs> Great, I'm going to be poor or I'm going to sneak it on. No, you won't. <laughs> You won't be poor. You'll, you'll live very well. We live very well. I have my own apartment. It's huge. Um, I like big open floors when you first enter with the living room and kitchen all open. That's the first thing you see. And then I have a couple of bedrooms off in the back for the kids and they come visit, but also my own office. Um, I also sleep in my office. <laughs> really? And the other bedroom is reserved for the children when they come. Our kids, our little babies. Wait. And then um, what you do, the office is really just your studio. Okay. I call it office because you write it off on your taxes, and that's what I write it as, office. Okay. Um, and which is a great trick because then they take that money out of your total rent for the year. Oh. Your, the government pays for your office. Oh, your study. Thank you. Thanks for the pointer. <laughs> Must have met yes. somebody that's some kind of math person. <laughs> yes, you do. You do. You meet someone who helps you tremendously with, with the whole tax thing and what to write off, what not to write off. Oh, it was so, I couldn't do it. And I just said, I gathered everything and I said, here, just take it. Mm. You do it. And they did oh. it. <laughs> wow. Boy, I'm going to load off already. Thanks, future friend. Um, what, what state do I live? teach you how to handle your own friend. Okay. You still live in the same state. But you, because it's a lot cheaper to live there in that area, you move out of town a bit, out on the outskirts, um, out of spring. And no, you still live in spring. The date's still, it's still in spring. It's still okay. technically spring. Okay. And then you travel everywhere. And that's why you live there because it's, 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 it's not as expensive. It's near the kids, it's near your ex-husband, <laughs> because you have still do family get-togethers. Yay. That's yeah. how I feel. That's, you know, all the hints I've been given. That feels exactly. And you do it at his house, though, his home. He keeps the house. Oh, um, and you're fine with it. And you're fine with it, because the, the kids will spend most of their time there. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and you don't have him pay for your apartment. He offers it, though. He was very kind about it. It's like marriage kind of made you two both hate each other. And then when that label was ripped away, you two became friends like we used to be. And now we're just partners. It's like the whole marriage thing kind of muddled it, made it something it, it wasn't it made it put pressure on both of us to be something just we just weren't with each other we're not we made, no. we made good partners not good lovers yes. god that's perfect how do you know so much about me <laughs> See, i wonder why <laughs> and um, then you're you meet a man who completely changes your life you haven't met him yet the, the ones that you're talking to and you know who they are Dude. not yet not yet they aren't the one although they are fun for the time being it's only the one the cake mr cake man and great tell me about cake because you said they now you're saying the one just cake cake's not the one both oh. of them are you have more fun with cake and the fact that you enjoyed the chase. <laughs> Wait, I had more game. fun with cake? Um, yeah, between okay. the two. The two. I can't even believe you're mentioning the other one. That's crazy. <laughs> okay. 
The other one doesn't even matter. He does, he does, he goes away. You eventually drop him because you just he's not reciprocating. Okay. But cake does a little bit. He he. I love him. <laughs> no, I can't tell you. <laughs> yes, you can. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> he lets you nibble on him a little bit more <laughs> before it ends. So it'll just be with that. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna have my cake and eat him too. <laughs> Was I even supposed to say that? <laughs> oh dear. Okay, let's talk. Can we talk a little bit about Avery? Did I connect with him better? And did I have that moment where I saw him? Give me a second. Okay. Okay. So, oh my God. Like, is there a few years? <clears throat> We both can be crying at the same okay. time. Sorry. I'm going to suck it up. It's so weird because I want to cry and I'm face is scratching up and no tears come out. What is that? She's dehydrated? <laughs> what is that? She has some of my emotionless. She's so emotional. She never <laughs> cries. I've seen I her know. cry twice, twice since I've known her probably. And and I'm trying to cry through her, and it just never can happen. I now I know why she's she tear ducts. Her tear ducts are broken. <laughs> They're just broken. I've solved the mystery after over how many years now? A decade, over a decade. I finally solved the mystery. I can tell her that she would laugh. <laughs> okay, now stop with the tear ducts. Go to space, man. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Okay, there'll be a moment where. You are going to see him, and it's going to take a couple years. You will have the memories. They'll come to you, and you'll just be like, fuck. You know, I remembered this, and I was there. I was in him. Oh, God, all, all over him. Mm, it's delicious. And then there will be a moment where you don't have – it's almost like you you're, are fully aware when he enters in it. Not you, but the room. <laughs> when he enters the room, yeah. I have to clarify that part. You do. And you don't have to recall the memory like with all the others. You are remembering him before that in all the things that you've done. And they'll start trickling in the memory slowly. They'll come in as a feeling. You'll wake up and you'll feel a certain way. And you won't know why. You'll just see, you'll just know you saw Avery and you know you felt happy. Or you saw him and you feel really turned on. <laughs> and they'll give you clues as to what happened with him. And just uh, my advice is, I, and I wish I would have done this, was to just let the feelings mix in and overtake you. And every, almost every morning you're going to just wake up crying. <laughs> And you'll, that'll be your morning routine. Wake up, cry for about 30 minutes, get your coffee. Um, because the memories with him are so powerful and the emotions that you feel with him. And when he enters that room and it's when you're still living at that house and you're still with your husband, I <laughs> say your husband now, he's not mine anymore. Um, he, you you don't have to remember it. You're recalling it while it's happening. You're, you're there. And it's going to come at such a shock for you. It's so... Mm. Really? Are you so in love with him? Are you? Yeah. He's just in his body and his arms. His ch <sighs> oh, oh, that makes mm. me so happy. Because, oh, you know, he so, feels so far away from me right now. He's so special. Yeah. Can you give me a hint about how we're connected, like with Minerva? Because was he a fairy too, or no? Didn't we figure that one out? <sighs> Not necessarily. Yeah. Minerva said that Sam, Avery, and the third are part of her galactic family. So in my mind, it's separate. But maybe he's more connected to me than I think. He, from what I'm trying to remember something that was channeled a long time ago that wasn't channeled for you yet and i'm trying to okay. remember what was said because it wasn't that 
significant. It was something that we already knew. Mm. It's like he and the other the other aliens. Right. Let's just call it that. Right. And they have their own bubble. <laughs> okay. Their own section the they're bubble? in that's connect that's connected to Minerva. Okay. So they are part of Minerva. Minerva is not, she is like her own entity yeah. in and of itself. And when she comes in, she really fucks up your technology. Really <sighs> fucks up my webcam. It makes me look blurry. And I don't like it. And it doesn't matter how, you get a better laptop, you get better lighting, you get a whole okay. new webcam that you attach to your laptop because you feel that, that the webcam you buy that attaches to your laptop works way better than the webcam's built-in, in the laptop's built-in okay. webcam. And this is when you get way more money. And you get a better mic that's not attached to any wires. So your hair, your hair doesn't like cover up the sound. And so vain. It's, it's on a table okay. and it's a beautiful mic. I named it Rosalina. Ah! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I forgot why Wait, I named it. Wait, Rosalina or Rosalinda? Rosalina. Okay, I don't know then. Okay. <laughs> because I, I liked it and it, it was pink like a rose. And I said, oh, it's pink like a rose. Rosalina, you know, oh, during one of my videos, and then it's just kind of stuck. And dork. so sometimes it would, <laughs> you're a dork. <laughs> and sometimes when it acts up, I yell at Rosalina. I'm like, oh, Rosalina. It really makes it easier. It's Rosalina's fault. Yeah. Rosalina and Minerva. I, you know, I used to blame Eric for everything, but I'm shooting straight to the top now. It's all on Minerva. Yes, it is. <laughs> She's, she messes with everything when she comes in and she does it on purpose. She's us. She has our sense of humor. Hmm. She thinks it's funny. Hmm. She's a little shit then, isn't she? So uh, what you do in the future is you do these shows. Yeah. And this show, Silver Linings, ends eventually. But it expands. You create a whole new thing. And it, it's like an expansion of this. Okay. But it, it, it's so much bigger than that. And I, mean, I don't know how to describe it. Without it sounding, because to you, it's not going to seem like a big deal. But when I'm explaining it to you, because you didn't like transition into it, it's going to be like, you know, amazing. But it's not <laughs> to me. Uh, it's you're going to interview different people who are professionals. I don't know the word uh, in the spiritual community and people that are well known in the spiritual community. I will say that. So I'm going to be the shit? Yeah, you will be an interviewer that everyone watches. You probably get 100,000 views per uh, video. Wow. And you have them come. Sometimes you have them come in to your small office <laughs> and interview them there. And the way you have the office set up, because the room's pretty spacious, you mm -hmm. can make it look like it's this fancy studio and it's really not. You're really good. We're really good at making things look bigger than they appear. We're, <laughs> it's like we're good at making ourselves look better than they appear in person. <laughs> it's all about the lighting. <laughs> it is. It's all about the positioning. You get really into, not feng shui, kind of your own version of feng shui. I call it carry shui. <laughs> and you make things like the room look fancier. It makes it more like a studio. <laughs> I'm in love with myself. Oh, I'm so funny. Oh. No, we are funny. We are. Okay, so what motivated me to ask for like a 10-year, you know, jump was because I was told that I was going to have like a big party at this house and Michael's going to come out. Is that the truth? Not anymore. Oh. It changes. Oh, wow. How are me and Michael? Are we friends? Mm. It's still kind of how it is now. Really? You have here. Okay, so let me say that throughout the years, and it could ch change again, uh -huh. but, which is weird for me because it doesn't. Okay, right. I don't know how this works still. And you, you have pockets of time where you're very close, and then you 
come apart. You only come together when you absolutely need to. Huh. And you learn that too. Okay. Where you become closer only because you need to be closer in that. Oh, stomach growl. Uh-oh. Ooh. I don't like that feeling. And they it's just, you don't need to be close right now. Okay. Huh. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay. Um, did you spy on me, write a message in my journal today? In my journal at Heather? No. Oh. No. I was trying today. to do like a time traveling trick. <laughs> Didn't work. Um, I have to find it and then i will but i don't think you'll get it how does that work i have no idea i was just experimenting but that's okay i, I can't give it's not a time traveling notebook Who was that? Be, well i'm, I'm I hoping it. that i remember the future me remembered to read it but oh I that yeah <laughs> I, don't know. I would have to find it first okay well let's skip it because I'm over that already. Okay. Okay, so I think that you answered all of the questions that I really okay, do I channel them? I do channel. Do I? A little bit. Only for yourself though. You don't do it for other people. Okay, but do so I do get a little bit successful with that though. Is it is it am I just is it still am I still so dowdy? Yes. Mm-hmm. It'll never stop. And you'll have moments where you feel very confident one day and then the next day you're just like did I say that right? Was that right? And then mm, you, you message right. back the person and it's just a friend and you'll say, Oh, maybe I meant this. Maybe they meant this. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So I have a theory. Can I run it by you real quick? Go for it. I like like cake and the other one. I feel like they are pieces of me and I'm collecting fractals that perhaps fairy girl created for me to have relationships with and put myself back together. Am I onto something with that? Mm, Not really? Well, everyone's each other. Mm-hmm. I know. Do you know how I am? Okay. This is a new theory. I don't want to give it away, though. Okay, then don't, there yet. then don't don't give me secrets I shouldn't have yet. I can't believe I just said that. It would give away the journey. Okay. Learning it. Okay, don't do that then. Okay, but is my is my dog a fairy dog? A fairy dog? Does that work? <laughs> <laughs> I love her so much. I'm wondering. She, she was, was a fractal. daughter. Uh, she was a daughter to you before in another life as a human. <laughs> oh, I love her so much. Do, okay, do I still have her? I mean, does she still? She, oh, she's uh, fine. You, you don't keep her. Uh, Layla gets way too attached. And okay. let her. But she's still here though. Okay. I she's still very get old, love her. She's very old though. Awesome. Yeah. And all my kids go to college? Is that? For the most part. <laughs> I won't ask. <sighs> any <laughs> advice for any of them? For me or for them? Hmm. <sighs> Are we going to do normal, normal trials and tribulations or do I got some radical shit? No, it's all normal. I'm trying to find something that's, but it's honestly, you're doing, we're doing fine. They come out fine. I'm okay. trying to worry about it. Okay. Thank you. That's such a gift to have that information. Every parent yeah. that's watching this is going to say, wow. Well adjusted, even though, you know, you're a little, we're a little. I know. Come out and they, they signed up for us. They, they chose us. And because of that, they're way more open-minded, accepting, compassionate, and they're able to bend to the will of what happens. Because they can't control what happens to them, but they control how they choose to respond in life and how they choose to react to those things. Hmm. And because of you, they learn to just go with the flow of life so they're not stressful adults they're not uh, you know letting their experiences get the best of them oh that's so awesome i love that and i know you know for all the fighting that dad and i do i know he's a quality man and i know that he has taught them a lot of good things too i just he teaches them how to be well adjusted adjust adults as they get older He, he really helps with the how to do finances and how to save their money and all that human stuff, but you teach them more about the emotional part of being 
And right. I'm He's practical and I'm emotional. Yes. And it works. You both meet halfway and they get both fulfillments, which is why you two brought together because it's the kids that are really going to go forward and do lots of things. Really? So people. we like, we're together just to grow these magnificent kids, huh? Fuck. Okay. Okay, so future Carrie, I'm going to switch soon, but I want to know if there's anything else that you think is relevant enough to tell me now. I love you. You need to hear that. I love you. And your life only gets better from here. It's going to be hard. Yes, there'll be moments where it does get difficult. But it just always ends up better in the end. I'm Everything. learning that. That's what I've learned recently. Don't fear it. Surrender. Because when the dust settles, it's better than it was before. It's like you find that diamond after going through all the dirt. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for that. You, you ready? That's the same message for everyone, too. Okay. Yeah. Life isn't as hard as it seems. And that's something you also learn is just, you've gotten, we've gotten to the point where <laughs> we just let it happen and we just, hmm, it'll be fine. Because it always does. Yeah. And if it isn't, we're pretty innovative enough to come up with something. And we're smart. We can figure it out. Yeah. We always find the answer, and we always have the tools that we need to find the answers. And when you say we, you don't just mean me and you. You mean everybody if they let themselves. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I do like to make it about me, but I like to make it about the collective me too. Everybody to benefit from my Oh, please. Can you just do that so people will continue watching so we can make it Stop about the them? truth. Shut up. <laughs> Not true. Because I'm not, you know, well, this is the first opportunity I've really had to truly, truly make it about me. I withheld all those other shows for the past few years. <laughs> okay, you want to switch to brothel me? Okay. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Oliv, give her a minute. Okay. I, I don't know. I don't like She's still in there. Uh. I think I was there a lot more than I usually am. So you spied on the whole thing? Kind of. There's certain areas where I don't know what was going on. Mm. That I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay. That's true. Who, we're doing brothel now? That one's going to be way easier. Doing the future one was a little difficult. Huh. Like why? Um, it was like, um, it was a hard, it was, it took her longer to get into my body than it usually would. I don't know why. Maybe it's because she was hesitant. I think I felt hesitant um, okay. on her end. But I know it's just your higher self, so maybe she was hesitant on giving you answers. Right. I didn't push. He was actually pretty forthcoming with the information. <clears throat> Blabber. Sorry, the whole time I was just, I kept thinking, am I doing mannerisms right? But oh, I'm like, yeah. You should keep fluffing her hair and sticking her finger in her mouth. So I'm like, but it doesn't matter what I'm doing. It's not me doing it. It's her. <laughs> so it okay, so I'm going to go and stop talking. I just needed a moment to... Collect okay. myself. Okay. okay I, why is this happening? I guess I didn't like my hair up. Got a fluff. It's in the way and it's annoying. Okay. Should just chop it off. All right. It's brothel. Or, it's so funny. They all like come in as a group and they're like, oh, shuffling away and they're like, bring this one in. You mean all the me's? <laughs> no. Uh, all of Minerva's here and some uh and your spirit team your entire spirit team's here and they're like okay which and then they're trying to form it I, you know bring in the energy is what it is okay <sighs> okay look how happy you are Holy cow, I thought you'd be like a sad prostitute. 
Only sad when it's happening. Hold on. Oof. Girl, I cannot get this. Okay. Do you have an accent? I do. Okay. Where do you live, girlfriend? (laughs) (laughs) Everyone, okay, hold on. This is too much. Mm, Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Hi. Oh, it's a brown hair. Mm. What color is Bravo girl hair? Oh, blonde. Okay. Really? My yellow curls. Huh. Where do you live? Do you know? What? But you've changed the name by now. Oh. Uh, it's near where uh, Louisiana. Not Louisiana. That's not where Louisiana is. It's over there by uh, between a Utah area. Uh huh. Um, that's Utah now, right? That yes, it's Utah now. It is. That's st- it. Was still Utah then. Okay. So I don't think the states is this. It's Utah now. Yeah. All right, you were there. And what's the year? You know, because you came from Louisiana. I didn't know which one you were talking about. You were born in Louisiana. You moved. Okay. Gosh, in a covered wagon, I bet. What year is it, sort of? Do you know? I was like the um, eighteen hundreds area, eighteen fifties. That's where I'm at. That's the one that's brought in. Okay. Let me talk about that a minute. I know you know, but the other people don't. But Michael had, I don't know if it was a dream or just like a semi-awake state, but he got a name and a date. I think it was 1862 or something. And I'm 1852. Got, maybe that was it, then. And then he got a name. Does this name mean anything to you? Mariana Americ. <gasps> Close. <laughs> what? Close. As Mariana, not Mariana. All right, because you got the accent. Who's Mariana, you or her? I'm me, you, you're not, me. I am. You, you. Well, I'm Mary okay. Ann. And was Michael my sister, your sister? My Michael, your sister, my sister. Okay. Michael? Yeah. Gosh, okay. you got to call in fairy girl for some of these references. Fairy girl. Right, because I, now that I call her in, it's going, I'm going to lose it. <clears throat> okay, so. Because I'm dead, I have to call in this, and it takes me a moment to hear it. Okay. Don't make fun of me. I'm gonna. (laughs) You're adorable. All right, so she, okay, so that Michael, his sister, he was my sister. So we were like sisters, Michael. Mm -hmm. He took, she took very special care of me when I was in the brothel. I had come to town. I had moved with my family. Father was killed on the way. These uh, cowboys came and took all the stuff and shot my father. So it was just me and my mother. And I had two sisters. I was the eldest. And then my mother died, this and Terry, by the time we got there. We had moved because the father wanted to hunt for gold. I call it hunting because good luck. And, and then I only had my sisters. And I had to find a way to take care of them. There was nothing to take care of them for. I was a woman. We weren't allowed to work. The only job I was allowed to have was sexing. <laughs> we we good at it. I don't think so. I got I got a couple of returns. <laughs> well, that, can we talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. It ruined. Oh god, that one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> Because you, do you know he that was my favorite. That? He was my favorite. And you want to know why he was my favorite? Because he had a big dick. <laughs> big, big and juicy. It was nice. And there was a nice treat for me, too. It was like a vacation. You know, I go through all these nasty old men, dusty as hell, coming on through. And I'm like, oh, no. And then here he comes. I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> I loved him, though. You loved him. I did. I <laughs> He would talk to me. Sometimes he would just order me just to talk. That was it. Wow. 
Was he? And I would I would think at first I thought he was an old man, but he never asked me to marry him. I wished he would have made an honest woman out of me, but he never did. He and I should have just asked him, but I didn't ask him. You asked him. Mm-hmm. What happened with you two? Because I think I know. Oh, he ended up dying. Yeah, right. shot right in the head. Him and his brother. Who Who's was your his friend? brother? The friend, this one. Yes. That's this one. Fuck. I don't like her right now. <laughs> he ends up getting him killed, and I got angry at him. And then he comes in and he says, "I'm sorry." And I was like, "What y'all do gone do that for?" Oh. Okay, so what they got into was they would steal people's gold that they got. They would they would hunt down gold miners and shoot them dead once they found the gold, and then she, they bring them back, and then they would spend it on us. <laughs> I get all of it, and that was just a mistake. It was upsetting. But did we do? Were we doing a twinny relationship between you two? Huh? Yeah, yeah. I would say so. He was very tied to me, and he didn't want to leave that town. Usually, they leave the town after they raided a few, a couple of times from a couple of miners. Oh, he didn't want to go. No, they wanted to go to that, what, uh, it's California now, because it was way more over there, more gold. Uh-huh. Um, and that's just, they got shot instead. And did my heart get broken? Mm-hmm. Because your favorite man wasn't coming in anymore. It was like, it was different than him coming in to have sex with you. Sometimes he'd just come in to talk. And you would say, oh, sugar, you don't have to pay. And he said, but how are you going to take care of your sisters if I don't? So. Sometimes he bringing them gifts with the stolen gold. I didn't care how he got the money. I just know he'd bring us food, clothes, sometimes bread. He'd pay for us. And then he would uh, and then he'd give us something extra. He'd say, here's a loaf of bread. I saved it for you. Oh. <laughs> He took me out on a show once. There was these men, these couriers coming by in the wagon, and they would do shows out of the wagon. Oh. Take me on a, on a date that was. That was nice. Gosh, you're nothing like I imagined you to be. I just felt like you were such a sad person. Wow. Yeah, is- it was a little sad, but you make do with what you got. Yeah. Do you know, can you access that if um, this version of me absorbed you? Do you know that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was like, the remember- ones that were important, you needed to heal the side of myself that was abused from all the sex. I just yeah. couldn't enjoy it anymore. And the only solace I got was from your Eric. And I called him Maurice, <laughs> but I call him that still. So, Maurice, I got my solace from him, but he wasn't enough to heal me entirely because after he died, I mean, what else was I going to do? And, so then I started to collect money and save it and suspend it. Because when I died, who was going to take care of my sisters? Or when I got too old, how was I going to pay to take care of my sisters? And I worked hard to find them men. And they grew up to become married and were taken care of. And, and I just died. <laughs> old woman. Did, do I know my other sister in this life? No. No. Um, the youngest one is the one that you were closest with. And then she was the first one to get married off because she's a cute little button thing. And all men were going after her. And I, would, I had to be picky for her because she was just, I'm in love with him. I'm like, you know him two minutes. How are you in love? I like his pocket watch. Oh, all right. Well, that's uh, love. <laughs> oh, and I married Michael off too. <laughs> no. Oh tried and then oh she was a mistake and she ends up marrying this farmer and i tried to set her up with this other man who was much richer and he was a businessman traveled and i said you can travel a lot you can go from big town to big town he was only out there out west because he was wanting to open up a like some type of barber shop over there and then he it didn't work out for him because everyone keeps dying. So then he said, I'm just going to leave. This is not a good place to open up business just yet because it's too, it, there were, the law wasn't right. Wild, wild West still. 
Yeah. And she ends up marrying this farmer man. And I say, you're going to be poor. And she said, but I love him. I'm like, all right. All right. Marry him. But I made sure they were taken care of. And then by the time I was old, they took care of me. Because I was too old to take care of myself. So. Where did you live when you were old? I, didn't know, I ended up first? living with my youngest sister. She took, she took me up once I was too old to continue sleeping with the men. So they don't want an old lady. Unless they ended that. But there was very far a few in between. Right. Like those kind of men. Hmm. How did that feel, being an aging, rejected hooker? How did that go with your self-esteem? I was very stretched out by then, and I was just <laughs> done with it. Ah, uh, okay. I would milk the cows and just sit down with them, and I felt like one of them. I'm like, I want you now. You're so funny. Out to pasture. So what did you strive to learn from that life? Because I know that that life was significant sexually, as this one is supposed to be, too. I thought I had too much that time and not enough this time. Yeah. I was supposed to find hmm, oh, like this the seven linings in the shit I was given. And I've decided to focus on the love for my sisters and the happiness that I found for them. And that was my lesson. But also to learn patience and to learn to find love in the strangest places. What was the strangest place that you found love in? Oh, Maurice, the man that would pay to see me, but didn't have the guts to ask me to marry him. I would have in a heartbeat, but the thing is, is once I crossed over, I learned that he just didn't think he was a good enough of a man. Oh. <laughs> and I didn't think I was a good enough of a woman. I bet that happens too often. People just don't know. Uh -huh. And I still I hate that brother of his who got him killed. And you're he in the body man. right now. How does that make you feel? I don't know how I feel. Pincher, pincher. No. She told me to respect it. I will keep that idle. <laughs> wow. This is so trippy. I appreciate this so much. You, do you have, uh, I don't know if it's easy or hard for you. Is there any of my friends now that you can identify from then? Is that something that's easy for you or not necessarily? Yeah, I can crack do a few. Okay. Um, I have to listen to other people because I only know the names okay. in my life. So I have to ask for a translation. All right, Corina is one of them. I knew it! <laughs> and ooh, a woman named Landa and... Amanda? Landa. 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 Linda. Lin Landa. Yeah, Linda, that's what I said, Linda. <laughs> Okay, that's exactly what you said. Uh, <laughs> one more. One more. Who is the one with the, uh, that, uh, no, the man, not Amanda. Yes, Amanda. Oh, don't. No. What's her name? Sarah. Yeah, uh -oh. Sarah. What was Sarah? Yeah, Sarah was, she was a man. <laughs> and, oh, she was that one. She would be the pastor that would run up and down the streets. And she come, he at the time, she come in. I had no idea that was her. And she could come in, because I'm very close with her on the other side. Yes. So, <laughs> anyway, and she would come in and say, Lord, you need help, and would say the Bible verses for us, save our souls. And I say, you don't need our souls saved. We need money to do that and that. And he said, I am the man of the Lord, or, or something of that matter. And then I say, well, you ain't got no money. I can't help you. <laughs> and you she can't help me. Good Jesus. <laughs> the Lord can't help me. The Lord can't give me money. Right. What is the Lord going to do? It's not going to throw down money because I'll press start praying right here now. <laughs> Fuck, I'm in love with you. I love you. You seem to have such strength and I can tell already that you are a master of finding silver linings, weren't you? Yeah, it was. And I just accepted life as it came at me. I had to. I mean, witnessing both my parents die, that broke me. Right. Those were my sad moments, but I grew on from there. 
I had to for my sisters. It, it's so much easier to be strong when you have to be strong for someone else. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And did, did, my, did I spend part of this life healing for that shit you went through? Or? Yes, yes. Because by the time I crossed over, it was, it was a lot of healing for my soul. And, and you also wanted to experience in this life, having other lives integrated into yours. It's not going to be the only one I'm being told right now. It's not the only one that's going to be coming in. And it's practice for when you morph into the other thing, this the blue being. Right. The beautiful mistress. Right. So I'm going to have other lives bleed into this one. I was going to ask that too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Trippy. Well, do you know if I'll recognize it? When, as yes, you? absolutely. You'll know when it's happening. Wow. Do you know what it is? Like you, like you did with this one. No, I'm not going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> I know the rules. I don't know which things you're allowed to tell. What not? Yeah. No, not allowed to tell. It's just that you don't need to know. It ain't important. Oh, okay. You then. know it's going to happen. Huh. Gonna know. All right. All right. Well, I, I love this so much. I love the God, you're so fucking sassy. You are not who I imagined you to be. Did you go out hunting? Did you have a rifle and shoot things? Oh, hey. oh no. <laughs> Me with Were a gun. You, <laughs> you better run. <laughs> <laughs> Were you really girly and like to fluff your hair and put lipstick on? I did. I enjoyed doing that part. I wore a wig many times. Oh my. <laughs> Big old wig. Okay. I'm gonna I know Heather's gonna get tired soon, so I'm gonna set you free. But I, I enjoyed this so much. Do you have anything else to share that you want to share? Yes. I kinda wanna talk about how it's interesting that I got to talk to someone else to get the information to you. <laughs> I know. Who are you talking you to? Think, you would think I would know. I'm talking to your spirit team and they come in and, and it's really more about them deciding what you can and can't know and who to bring forth. Who's and my spirit the, team? Bringing in the people. Yeah. Your spirit team, you know, the, the guides, the people that help you. I know. I want to know who. How many? Who? You have about a few. Uh, I'll line up. And then you got about 12. Wow. 12, but they change. They come and go. And there's some that come in, say, I'm here to help. And then they leave right afterwards. So it's not like you have a set number. Okay. And then they come in and, and what had when bringing forth the people who were in your life, who was deciding not just what would benefit you, but benefit those because you're going to tell them. Of course I am. I can't wait to tell him. You tell him, and it's about what benefits them. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. That makes sense. But, yeah. So they were deciding who to benefit from. There was one I wanted to tell you, but they said it wouldn't benefit them. Not yet. So give it a couple of years, come back and ask me. Can mm-hmm. I? Yeah. That's how we bend the rules. <laughs> oh. I love breaking the rules. You're a good rule breaker. I'm going to tell you who Amanda was because you said that name. And it yes. Was, and there was one named Amanda, but I can't tell you. No. Was Amanda a boy or a girl? Oh, girl. And she was one of the ones I worked with. She ended up dying from childbirth. She got pregnant from one of the men. So. Okay. She was one of my know. good friends. She was one of my good friends. Is she really? It's so funny. I messaged her yesterday. I emailed her yesterday. That's crazy. Oh my God, I love do you, her. Do you cry? Are you a big cry baby? I try not to because it doesn't turn me on. <laughs> it's all about that game. Yeah, keep gotta, it in. I gotta clean that shit up. <laughs> I mean, I would cry after the shift was over and they all left and I was done for the day. But right now, not so much. I'm very happy where I'm at. Really? Why do I need to cry? I'm happy. Well, I cry when I'm happy. Oh, that too, but no, not so much me. <sighs> I'm a big lady. All right. Let me kiss you goodbye, okay? All right. Oh. <laughs> Bye, hugger me. Oh, please. <laughs> she got it. <laughs> Do you remember any of that? Right, kind of. She's fucking hilarious. She speaks with a full-on drawl. That girl, she has got an accent. And you know what? 
she don't like you. You know why? Because you are responsible for getting her man Maurice slash Eric killed. Because you two were out stealing gold. We still gold? That's awesome. You still gold to call fire the hookers. <laughs> you know, we, and you know, you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta get a week. You got to get him where he can, you know? Oh, that was so trippy. She was so funny. <laughs> ah, ah. I'm like so high strung right now with the emotions. So I'm, I can't even like think to talk. And I know you always get tired after these things. Too. Oh, no, I'm okay right now. I'm okay. <sighs> My tongue feels strained, though. My throat right here. And it might have been from her accent or something. She sure it feels had. like it, it feels very strange, like it was used a lot. God, that was trippy. She says that we got to talk to her again in a few years so we can give some more information for other people that were in the, the brothel life. It's not going it to, it's not going to benefit them yet. So you got to come <laughs> back and ban the rules and ask again when we're allowed to tell more. <laughs> <laughs> That would be annoying to me. <laughs> I don't know about all that. Ah, oh, that was fun. Thank you so much. You know, I, I don't know if you heard this, but I'm not going to be the master that you are, and I won't be able to reciprocate. I'm not a master. I'm still practicing my trance channeling. I'm not that good yet. Oh, shut the fuck up. But let me tell you, tell everybody about this, is that I know that this is something that you don't do for everyone. You do it for the shows, and you do it for me. Because mm -hmm. you love me so much. So it's not a regular thing you do. And I, I, I appreciate it so much. I'm, I'm disappointed that I don't get to flip that around. But I have other ways that I give to you. So I'm going to heal you. Or needs, I, I, I need that. You need a little bit. I, I need that so much. <laughs> but the thing, I, I don't like trans channeling for other people. It just takes a lot of out out of me and I have to get to know the spirit first. So if someone's like, I want you to come channel my dead dad or whatever, that's not how I work. I can't bring in your loved ones. I have to get to know them first and get used to their energy before I do anything with them. And I remember when you, just just to throw this out there, I just remembered, but one time um, Margella, who was Michael's higher self, they surprised me and switched from Heine to Margello. And Heather's body just couldn't acclimate to it. It was like such a, and it's weird because if we're all from the same, you know, blast of energy from Minerva, you would think that the energies would be more identical, but your, your body, it was too foreign. I think it was just the body couldn't handle it. Not that our energy was different. Yeah, obviously it's so different weird. because he's not in a physical body. Uh -huh. so I th yeah. It was more like that. It was just he was too at a high vibration. He didn't know how to lower his vibration enough to you know, fit better. So it was like you were trying to squish a bigger object into a small uh, box. It just wouldn't fit. Yeah, that was weird. So, you know, there's, that's another problem that can arise with trans channeling too, that there's just whatever. There's not a, a match all the time. I don't get it. Right. Okay, before we go, though, um, let's just touch on Stardust, the okay. event and everything, because we got, you know, I want, I want more people to come. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> for people that... You should do it. It's your show. Well, okay. Well, no, we can both do it, but I don't need to own that part. But um, we do have a Stardust event. We have another channel. I'm sure most of you seeing this know what we're talking about. But the aliens, we work with some aliens, and they're going to come meet us energetically out in the desert. They actually live there, so we're going to go to them. And um, we have this big event. We had it last year. It was a huge success. We had another one at my house. We're going back to the desert in the springtime. It's beautiful there, yellow flowers. The weather's nice. And we're about halfway sold out. And if you buy a ticket before the end of this year, which is just a few weeks away, you get a 10% discount. So mm -hmm. get in on that. Did I already say we're about halfway sold? And, yep. I, and I know, you know, last time it did sell out. So it's going to lead to a two. So again, mm -hmm. this year, get your tickets. If you want any kind of information, they're in both of our pages, both of our groups, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll put links, or I'll put links at the right. um, posting of this. Stardust is um, something I, I started after I was finished doing work with Channing Eric and I went down the, the alien route. Um, and we, for people that don't know, we channel these beings called, I call them the Sarsar because they want to be called that. 
people would know them as the tall whites, uh, but they don't like that name because it gets them mixed up with other tall and white Nordic type aliens that aren't mm -hmm. the same species. And they, I like them because they're not these higher dimensional beings like the Palladians or the Arcturians. They're physical fleshy beings like us. Like they go into town sometimes dressed up like us. Good uh, and they gamble, they like to go shopping, they like to do all those kinds of stuff. But they live on this planet, but they're not from here originally. Uh, they just have a base here. They have a couple of them. And that's why I love them so much. They're just so more human. They're so much. They're very human. They're so human. They're like a, a notch evolutionary wise above us. Above us, right. Just one step above us, but we're catching up. And it's, you know, they're not guides. They're not spirit. They're not. They have a lot of human emotions. They experience jealousy and they experience, you know, the same things that we do. And I have, you know, I've talked to other aliens on, on the shiny show and they're like so advanced that they're like, we don't even need to die because right. we know everything. <laughs> kind exactly. of, you know? <laughs> and that's what I love about them so much, but they're so <laughs> compassionate and loving and understanding. Some of them, not so much. It's just, it's a different variation. They each have their own personality. They do have their own personalities. But so you know Huh. Sorry, I just, I, I had this thought is that, you know, how Avery and, and I'm, you know, I don't mean to make fun of myself necessarily, but Avery kind of married down because I'm a lovely oh. human, you know, yeah. but then when I come back as the alien, I like blow them all away. <laughs> I'm smarter than all of them. All right. Exactly. But anyway, both ways. <laughs> right. So what I like about the event is that they live out there in that desert where we're having the event and we're very close to their base and a few people had experiences. I can't promise that for everybody. I know I had my own. You had one. And um, people were seeing them running out in the desert. They they look like little lights running, but there's no roads back there, so it didn't make sense that there'd be these beings running around. These lights running around. They got their sketchers on. They're their sketchers. They're light up sketchers. Yeah, because their suits light up when they're in use. So they would zip across the ground, and we'd see them. It was great. It was a lot of fun. And I did not have any such experience, but I had a blast. I loved it there. It was so. I mean, you know, as the presenter the host you, you feel a little nerves you know you feel pressure to perform and entertain or whatever it is you're you know pressure's on we're not the guest but I still had such a good relaxing time despite that pressure it feels right. like a party and this year is going to feel like a party slash reunion because we're getting yes. uh-huh we it's a big sleepover we rented out in a whole house we're on nine acres we're in the <laughs> middle of nowhere it's great it's a dirt um, road and there's yeah. a bunch of like beds. We turn yeah. at nighttime. We turn the whole thing into like a giant dorm room. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Great. and it it's great. And you know, I get drunk. People get high. It's a fun time. You know, it's yeah. really relaxed. So I don't like. To, I've been to spiritual events, and I don't really like the ones that are set up like a classroom or like really formal. We're very informal. It makes it very relaxed. So if that's your type of thing, we're into spirit too and aliens. It's a mixture of both spirituality, science philosophy psychology and aliens all in one i like the balance of all of it so you could just come by and get to know us and it's a lot of fun have a i think that you know we had the halloween party at my house mm -hmm. we should have like a pajama party oh <gasps> yes footsie pajamas i have the best footsie pajamas what, what? I, have darth, I have darth vader footsie pajamas it would be perfect i will get some footed aliens. pajamas too i like to sleep naked but for walking around <laughs> with I'll pajamas I'll cut one foot out. <laughs> Mine comes with a cape, so I'm going to be Darth Vader zipping around the <laughs> with their lights. I got my cape right. zipping around. <laughs> You're going to be the dark side. They're going to be the good aliens. You're going to be the bad one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enough about that. So, yeah, buy your tickets. It's going to be so fun. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because I can't wait to watch it. I'm going to grab a whole damn box of tissues. Oh, and I, have to I hope something. I did a good job. I'm so nervous. I always think oh. I'm full of shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. you that's, why that I, I that's why I can't. That's why I can't watch them. I'm like, ugh, God, I'm so full of shit, and then I just turn it off. <laughs> like, ugh. there's Heather and her lies again. Yep, there I go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sissy pants. So I, I do. I have to go check my mail because I hope there's. I don't know if I've got a persimmon cookie or not. Did I? Oh yeah. I, I, did you get yeah. persimmons? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so I have something to send to you. So if it gets there in time for your birthday, it's a birthday present. 
If it gets there in time for Christmas, it's a Christmas present. If I miss both of those, it's a New Year's present. <laughs> Hopefully you'll get it by Valentine's Day. <laughs> okay, Sissy Pants, thank you so much for yet yeah. another miracle. You've given me so many miracles, and I love this one so much. I can't You're wait welcome. to see you, and I'll talk to you probably in like 20 minutes. Okay. I love you, baby. Bye. Bye.